This is probably the biggest upgrade that the Cabo Mantis line has ever seen. This scooter does it all. And in today's video, we're going to show you what we love about it, what we hate about it, and who we think the scooter's for. All right, Andrew, tell us what the main differences are from the prior version of the Cabo Mantis to the current Cabo Mantis King GT. First thing that catches my eye is the beautiful display with the thumb throttle. Previous versions have always combined a trigger throttle with a display. It's either the LT01 or the Mini Motors i3 display. Previous Mantis versions have always been 25 amp controllers. On the new one, it's a 30 amp sine wave controller. The folding mechanism is big as well. So this one has a nice, big, beefy clamp system, similar to the V-Set or Ryan, with an extra little safety mechanism that we've never seen before. These previous versions of the Mantis, they have the stem clamps that go up and down. There's been a lot of issues with them. They've tried to fix it, but this new one just instills a lot of confidence. It's a much easier locking mechanism on the new scooter compared to the old. They're both 10 inch tires, but these are 10 inch by two and a half inch tires. And on this version, it's a 10 inch by three inch tire. That's a hybrid off-road tire. Hybrid off-road tires give you the ability to ride on off-road or street riding without having to swap out tires. And one other big difference is how wide the handlebars are. On the newest version, it's 26 inches wide. And on the previous version, it's 24 inches wide. So it gives you a little bit extra stability at high speeds. This one is a little bit over eight inches wide and the deck on the new version is close to eight and three quarters. A little bit over 22 and a half. And yeah, they're about, they're the same deck length, just a little bit wider. You can password protect this version where you can't password protect the previous version. And that's what you're doing in. So this yeah. is Andrew's password. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Shh. The other major difference is the charge ports on the newest one. It's got M16 three pins, which prevents arcing, which is a huge issue with previous versions. They've got a nice big silicone deck that's thicker. This is a really thin. And then these lights down the side. These ones you can't change. These ones are controllable, so you can change the different colors on there. And the adjustable suspension. So previous versions have always had this little coil suspension. You can't dial it in. On the newest version, you have adjustable hydraulic suspension, so you can dial it in for any type of riding that you want to do. Also, the motor size has increased on it. In previous versions, it's always been a dual 1,000 watt motors. On the newest one, it's dual 1,100 watt motors. The best part, though, is how it rides. So let's get our safety gear on and let's hit the road. So we were just on the streets. Now we're gonna go do some single tracks. And I'm gonna adjust the suspension. And that's what I love about the scooter. So I just loosen it up, make it softer. I have it on the stiffest setting so I can ride faster on smooth pavement. But now that I'm gonna go on single tracks and it's gonna be bumpy, I want it to be a lot faster rebound so it's gonna absorb the bumps better. What's the water resistance rating on this one? IPX5. IPX5. So it is a lot better than the previous versions, but nobody covers water damage, so just make sure you think of that. We went through that muddy trail. We've had a lot of rain recently, and you can see Andrew is just covered in uh, mud back there. I look like I sharp myself. <laughs> and a big reason for that isn't because of a poor fender design. We actually took the fender off of ours. I'll correct what Jimmy said. It was a poor fender design. It was slapping like crazy, but Cabo has promised that this was just the prototype model. They are coming out with a rigid fender that should offer great coverage and not slap against the rear tire. We're gonna hold you to your promise, Cabo. Make sure I don't eat my words, okay? We're going fenderless in the back. Not unheard of. Should be fine in most cases, but uh, if you're riding in wet, muddy conditions like we've been riding, we're going to get a little, a little muddy in the back end. All right, beautiful day. We're heading over to our speed run test area. And uh, while we head over there, Andrew, tell us what you love best about this scooter. I really love this scooter and there's a lot to love about it. The bigger 30 amp sine wave controllers, the color display, the overall aesthetics of this scooter is just gorgeous to look at. The ride fill is by far the best Mantis I've ever ridden in the past. 
adjustable suspension. You're gonna see this on the speed test. There is a ton of power on this scooter. Controllable LED lights, just the ability to see how hot the motors are. I ride my scooters really hard and it's nice to know what temperatures are at the motors and controllers. Changes in the Cabo Mantis line have been incremental, but this has been a huge leap forward. My favorite things, it's the best display we've ever seen in a Cabo Mantis. It's the best charge port positioning and design we've ever seen in a Mantis. It's the best locking mechanism that we've ever seen in a Mantis. And it's the best feeling Mantis in terms of power, speed, and smoothness. The hybrid off-road tires. We were able to go from street riding to the off-road trail, no problems at all by dialing in the suspension and having the hybrid tires. Okay, we are at our speed test area and Andrew is geared up. He's got the Draggy satellite GPS speed tracker set up. And uh, what do we have to look forward here, Andrew? Supposedly it goes up to 43 and a half miles per hour. I've been able to get it on the display 46 miles per hour. So we're just gonna see if it all matches up correctly. All right, we've got it all tuned up. Dual motors, speed five, take one. <laughs> You're booking. It felt awesome and I didn't even stiffen up the suspension, but it felt ultra stable. There was never any shakes and shimmies, but let's pull out the draggy data. It said 46.9 was my max on the display. So, wow, it's pretty close. It said 46 miles per hour was my max speed. So I'm very impressed that the display was correct. Showing me my max speed, zero to 10 in 2.07 seconds, zero to 20 in 3.79 seconds, zero to 30 in 7.35 seconds and zero to 40 in 16.98 seconds. Very refreshing that the uh, speedometer on the scooter itself was accurate. Yeah. Right? When we first started the scooter endeavor, uh, the, uh, the speedometers were wildly off and they were always overestimating or, or showing you a speed that was much higher than what you were actually going. I think uh, now that we are fact checking them, they're making sure that their numbers are accurate. Now it's my turn to give it a spin. At our next stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we don't like about this scooter. I had Andrew tune it down a little bit for me so it wouldn't be as uh, crazy. You know, Andrew likes it crazy. It's an adrenaline Andrew. Um, and this is perfect for me. It's still it's got plenty of power, but it's got that nice smooth acceleration curve like so. Like all thumb throttles of this style, it's got a little bit of a dead zone and you just gotta pin your thumb. Woo, suspension works good. It's like I'm riding on Mars here. This section of the road is just very bumpy. I feel like I can maintain a nice, moderate, even slow speed, no problems with this thumb throttle. Suspension, check that out. What suspension are we on? Soft. Soft, yeah, feels nice and soft, very plush. Going over those bumps, no problem. This is, it's very nimble. It feels, it doesn't feel super big and heavy. I know we've already talked about all the things that we like about it, but just the versatility of this scooter. This scooter is perfect for work, commuting. It's perfect for play. It looks great. I mean, this thing does it all. So if you're looking for one scooter to cover all the bases, instead of having like a commuter, a lightweight commuter scooter and a big, fast, fun off-roading scooter, then consider this, because you can do just about anything you want with this. <laughs> so you lower your wind resistance so you can go fast. It's aggressive. My aggressive racing spin. Fast rebound? Yeah, fast rebound. And then switching it to slow rebound. Okay. And now this is slow rebound. See, it's a lot more stiff and it's going to be way more stable at high speeds. But it already is pretty darn stable at high speeds. Yeah. Soft, right? Yeah, when I did that speed run, I had it on fast rebound and it's still ultra stable. So that's what I love about the scooter. Some of them can just be soft all around, like the Nami. The Nami is soft on stiff. The Nami's soft on fast, <laughs> so soft all around. 
while the Cabo Mantis King GT is very impressive, it's not a perfect scooter. And here we're gonna talk about the things that we don't like about the scooter. Andrew, why don't you start off? The biggest issue I have with this type of display is it has zero memory. So I'm always in speed setting five, dual motors. If this scooter gets shut off, it automatically resets to speed level one and single motor. It's really obnoxious. I have to have five buttons to go up, hold down plus sign to go to dual motors. I want it fast all the time. The other issue, even though I've tightened this really nice and tight, it makes this clinking sound. It's really obnoxious. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a, a little felt thing to protect like your furniture on here and that should stop the issue. The thumb throttle itself isn't that bad once you get past that dead zone, but come on now, we need to fix this dead zone issue in these throttles. There's no reason to have that at all. Another thing I don't like about it is the voltage readout on the display is off. It'll show you you have more battery power than you actually do. So just make sure you pay attention because it's about two volts off. The fender that it came with wasn't very good, so we took it off. We're told by Cabo that they have made a whole new fender and that is how the scooter will be shipped with a much improved fender. The reason why you need a fender though, this thing is so powerful, it'll spray rocks up and if you're behind recording on a GoPro, it's gonna destroy your camera. Just like it destroyed my camera. So this video is ending up to be a little bit more expensive than to produce than some of our prior videos. So we appreciate you guys giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing. It helps us so the channel can buy more GoPro cameras so we can continue making great content for you guys. Anything else that you don't like about this scooter, Andrew? They've made the light high mounting it's better than previous models. It used to just be deck lights, but this thing still isn't that bright. And that's a problem shared by many scooters, the light. If you guys have any other questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.